No standing room, nothing? No, sir, we don't sell standing room. <laughs> it's sold out. I'm supposed to yes. have some tickets here. What's the name, sir? Flowers. Ron Flowers. From one of the teams? Quarterback of Dallas was supposed to have called down here and got me a couple seats. Well, we didn't have any tickets to give him because we didn't have any to sell. Not a week ago or ten days no, ago? No, sir, we sure didn't. Super Bowl's been sold out for two months. Hello. I wonder if you have two tickets here, please. My name is Mason. Mason? Yeah, they were left by Jack Newman. No, sir. No, not yet. I'll have to check. No, Mason. No tickets? No, sir. Oh, would you check again? I'm sure they were left here. They were left no? by Mr. Newman. From a team? Huh? From no, a team? No, he's with the office. He's with the league office. No. I don't oh, have any. Sure because I just talked to him this morning. I'm sorry. He hasn't come yet. Could you just look through the box one I more time? I did look. Well, could you check again? I'm sure they're here. I did. I have no Newman. Oh, there's got to be. It must be some mistake. Could you look maybe in the office or somewhere? They're all out here in this box. Well, it's impossible. I mean, I came all the way down from New York for the game. Well, you'll have to wait for the gentleman to leave them, to bring well, them. He told me he left them already. I already talked to him. I called him from the hotel. Well, you'll have to call him back. Oh, this is impossible. I came all the way down here for this game. I'm sorry, sir. Well, can I have your name, please? Because there's going to have to be something done about this. Ella May. I'm sorry? Ella May. Ella May? Mm -hmm. Now, what's your last name? Weatherwax. Miss Weatherwax? Because mm -hmm. I'm going to have to check into this. Mrs. Weatherwax. Realize. Mrs. Weatherwax? Yes. All right. This is just inexcusable. I don't know how you can run an office like this. Well, we do a pretty good job. Okay, Weatherwax. Thank you. Take a blimp ride. Super Sunday, 1971. A bright day of promise for an extraordinary game of pro football. Early in the first quarter, the fickle nature of Super Bowl V began to emerge. Baltimore's Ron Gardeen misplayed a punt, and Dallas recovered on the Colt 9.
three attempts to reach the end zone failed. And the Cowboys had to settle for a field goal. We gotta have it like we need it. Mike Clark's kick gave Dallas a three-point lead. But it was a disappointing end to an early opportunity. Well, I think we ought to just go with our regular stuff and blow them out of there. They're playing a little strong toward Pettis, I think. The next time the Cowboys had the ball, Coach Tom Landry instructed his quarterback, Craig Morton, to concentrate on the running game. Twisting through the Colts like two Texas tornadoes, Walt Garrison, number 32, and Dwayne Thomas, number 33, proved the worth of Landry's tactics. Only once did Morton resort to that old and honored cowboy trademark, the long pass to Bob Hayes. Hayes's catch brought Dallas to the Baltimore Six, but for the second time, Landry's offense was stopped by Don McCafferty's defense. third down a hard rush by Billy Ray Smith number 74 forced a desperate pass from Morton the pass was incomplete but even worse was the fact that Morton was called for intentional grounding and Dallas was penalized 15 yards The longest march of the game was shrouded in failure. The Cowboys had to settle for a field goal and again came away with three points instead of seven. Once in a great while, the clouds of chance will overshadow the plans of men. Such was the case in Super Bowl V when John Unitas dropped back to throw early in the second quarter. His pass bounced off the intended receiver, Ed Hinton, then was tipped by the Cowboys' Mel Renfro, and then caught by the Colts' John Mackey, who raced 75 yards to a touchdown. Cowboys protest at the play, claiming Renfro never touched the ball. If he had not touched it, the score would have been nullified. Passes can't be tipped from one offensive man to another unless a defender touches the ball in between. As the play is repeated from two different angles, watch the spin of the football accelerate when Renfro's fingers graze the laces. Unitas' touchdown pass evened the score, but it was his last look at the sun before the coming storm. The extra point attempt was blocked, and the next time Unitas took the field, Dallas made him pay dearly for his quick glimpse of glory.
fur downed Unitas escaped from his disintegrating passing pocket, only to be met by linebacker Leroy Jordan, whose perfect shoulder tackle jarred the ball loose, and Jethro Pugh recovered on the Colt 28. Morton moved the Cowboys to a touchdown with three quick passes to his running backs. Dwayne Thomas, number 33, and Dan Reeves, number 30. Opening of the second half, the Cowboys gained a foothold and threatened to break open the game. A jolting tackle forced a fumble. Dallas recovered and marched to the Colt two-yard line. Put it away, baby! Put it away! Let's go! It was another opportunity for the Cowboys, but again, their hopes were shattered on the rocks of the Colt defense. Wayne Thomas was hit hard at the goal line, fumbled the ball, and Baltimore recovered. It was a big play for the Colts. A touchdown might have clinched the game for Dallas, but instead the recovered fumble made a new beginning for Baltimore. This trial by fire stoked every heart, and for the first time in the game, the Colt offense seized the initiative. Earl Morrill replaced the injured John Unitas at quarterback and brought with him a hard-born determination to succeed where he once had failed. In 1968, Morrill led the Colts to Super Bowl III. And when he crumbled beneath the charge of the New York Jets, he was called a sunshine soldier. But today, he was a sturdy commander, and his experienced arm was the only consistent element in the Colt attack. Twice in the fourth period, Morrill moved Baltimore into scoring positions. But both times, the Cowboy defense denied the Colts a touchdown. Chuck Howley ended one drive with an interception in the end zone. 
the other drive ended with the most unusual play of the afternoon. Morrill handed to Sam Haverlack, who completed a pass to Hinton. Cornell Green ripped the ball loose, but neither team could recover it before it rolled out of the end zone. The officials ruled the play a touchback and awarded the Cowboys the ball on their own 20. Another look reveals the extemporaneous quality of this play. Haverlack was supposed to pass the ball back to Morrill, but Jethro Pugh, number 75, disrupted the pattern. Haverlack threw instead for John Mackey, but Ed Hinton caught it. When Cornell Green swiped the ball from Hinton's hands, neither team could recover it. Out of this offensive failure came a renewed determination on the part of the Colt defense. The emphasis was on the job ahead, not on the wreckage that lay behind. A pass intended for Walt Garrison was deflected into the hands of the Colt safety, Rick Volk. The real cause of the interception was the high-handed rush of number 85, Roy Hilton, who forced Morton to make an inaccurate throw. Volk carried the ball to the Dallas three. Tom Nowatzki powered into the end zone, and Super Bowl V was a tie game. Once in a great while, the drama of an entire season narrows to a very small focus. To the final plays of the final game. With seven and one half minutes remaining, the two survivors of the most competitive season in NFL history stood toe-to-toe -to -toe and slugged it out in a fight to the finish.
season living in its last seconds ignites the spirit of the true champion. Slowly but steadily, the Cowboys began to weaken under the ever-tightening grip of the Colt defense. The Cowboys did not break under the pressure, but they bent. A pass from Craig Morton bounced off the fingertips of Dan Reeves and was intercepted by Mike Curtis. Once again, and for the last time, the relentless Colt defense shaped the character of Super Bowl V. Curtis returned the ball to the Dallas 28 and put the Colts in range of a field goal. Set. Tell them all not to set until you tell them to set. And if they overload one side, give a man over right, a man over left. Nobody gets set till I holler set. Right, 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 now tell them all when you come in there. Let the fullback. Let Jerry. Let Jerry. Tell them in the hole. All right. Nobody got Nobody got a whole amount of set now. Right. Just try to make sure Bubba gets it now. Make sure he's on the set. You got to hold. 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 You the World Championship of Professional Football would be settled in one final play. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Please, please, please. All the money, all the glory, and all that counts in pro football rode on the right foot of rookie Jim O'Brien. 